This is a solution to a problem from the buoyancy force calculations problem set at sciencepriMer.com. The entire interactive problem set is available for free at the link in the video description. The problem we're going to solve is to calculate the buoyancy and gravitational forces acting on an object suspended in water. We're told that the object has a mass of 55 grams and a volume of 12.2 cubic centimeters. I find it helpful to have a visualization of what we're talking about here. So up in the corner, I'm going to draw a container with water in it and an object suspended in that water. Gravitational force is pulling downward. And the buoyancy force is in the opposite direction. That'll be FB. So we've got gravitational force, buoyancy force. Quick conversation about discussion of units. The units for force is the Newton, and the Newton equals kilograms meters per second squared. Remember that a force is a acceleration acting on a mass. In this case, the acceleration in both cases is going to be acceleration due to gravity and the mass will be the, the mass of the object in one case and a function of the volume of the object in the other. In both cases, for both buoyancy force and gravitational force, we're going to do mass times gravity and that will equal the force. So let's talk about what masses are involved before we go get into the calculations. For the force of gravity, it's a function of the the mass of the object. So as the mass of the object goes up, the force of gravity will increase. Buoyancy force is a function of the mass of water displaced. Yeah, the relationship is the same. The more water displaced, the more water displaced, the greater the buoyancy force. And the amount of water displaced by an object, when this is fully submerged, is a function of its volume, which is why knowing the volume of the object is important. So in the same sense, the greater the volume, the greater the buoyancy force. Now with that background, let's clear this information and start solving the problem. We'll do force of gravity first, so Fg. Remember we need to know the mass of the object for Fg. We're given this as 55 grams. But to do get the force in the proper units, we need to be in kilograms. So let's convert that into kilograms. The way I like to do this is to put the target unit on in the top. Say what that equals in the units it's in. In this case, gravity the grams are going to cancel. And quickly pull in the calculator and solve this. So we have 55 grams divided by 1,000. We'll give it 0 0.055 kilograms. So we have 0 0.055 kilograms. Now that we have the mass in kilograms, we can use this relationship. So 0 0.55 kilograms times 9.8 meters per second squared, the acceleration due to gravity, will give us Force, force of gravity acting on this object. And so we have our 0 0.55. We'll just multiply that by 
8, we will get 0 0.54. So the force of gravity acting on this object is 0 0.54 kilograms, meters per second squared, or newtons. So go ahead and throw that over here in our diagram. So the force of gravity acting on this object is 0 0.54. Four newtons. Write that a little more clearly. Ah. Of course, once I start erasing, I will never get this right. Zero point five four newtons. We can clear this pro this information and go on to the second half of the problem. So with the second half, we'll do the buoyancy force. Remember, this is a function of the volume of the water displaced, or the mass of the water displaced. And we get to the mass of the water displaced from the volume of the object. To do this, we actually need to know the density of water to go from volume to mass. And the relationship is density. equals mass over volume. The density of water equals one gram per cubic centimeter. So with this information and knowing the volume of the object, the volume of the object displaced the volume of the object is the volume of the water displaced. So if we know that the density of water is one gram per cubic centimeter, this equals, we need to know the mass of the water, and we know 12.2 cubic centimeters of water is displaced. Since this is one, if we just multiply both sides of this equation by the 12.2, the cubic centimeters are going to cancel and we'll end up with 12.2 grams of water. So that's the mass of the water displaced. Converting this to kilograms, and I won't pull the calculator in, but you can check this, 0 0.0122 kilograms. Multiply by the same acceleration due to gravity, 9.8 meters per second squared. This will give us our answer. Pull the calculator in again to do this one. Clear the old value. So we have 0 0.0122 times 9.8, and that's going to give us the answer of 0 0.12. So the buoyancy force is 0 0.12 kilograms, meters per second square, or newtons. And then we can jump over to here and put that zero point one two newtons. So these are the two things the problem that the question is being asked, uh, the things we're being asked to calculate in this problem. But I want to take it one step further and just talk about the implications of the relationship between these two values in terms of whether or not an object will float or sink. And it all has to do with which is greater. So if the buoyancy force is greater than the force of gravity, an object will float. If the buoyancy force is less than the force of gravity, an object will sink. So looking at these two, we see that 0 0.12 and 0 0.54 newtons. 0 0.5, 0 0.12 is less than 0 0.54. So in this case, the object will sink. 